Hi guys, I'm Tyler and you're watching the All You Need To Know Bass Show here on my channel. Today I'm giving you a comparison of the Ampeg SCRDI and the Fender Downtown Express preamp pedal. So here on the All You Need To Know Bass Show, I'm going to run you through an unboxing of both these pedals, then I'm going to take you through the features on each of the pedals, and then we're going to finish off with a full tone demo of both and a comparison between the two. These two pedals are pretty fairly recent to the market and I know that it's a big trend to go direct straight into front of house. I do it a lot myself when I fly to different gigs and things like that. So I think this is gonna be a great comparison and I can't wait to show you the features of both and um, hopefully give you guys an idea of which is best suited to you and what you do on your gig and in your practice routine. One of the reasons that I'm really excited to do this comparison is that both of these pedals are from Langley Guitar Centre here in the UK and there's the guys over there have actually offered me a deal to give to you guys um, and I'm going to reveal that later on in the demo so keep your eyes peeled and I will let you know what that deal is very shortly. We'll start off with the Ampeg here. Um, standard Ampeg style box, much like the box you get on their smaller preamp pedal which I've reviewed on my channel already. If you haven't already seen that, you can check that out and I'll put a link up here so you can click on that. So let's have a look inside. Nice box, as you would expect. The pedal itself comes in the plastic bag, standard stuff, standard affair. Um, Inside the rest of the box, you have the owner's guide. So here's the pedal itself. First impressions are it's really well built, um, much like the other Ampeg pedals that I've held. They're very, really solid. Um, actually fairly, fairly heavy, so if you're gonna put this on your board, you're gonna be adding a little bit of weight. I would say it's roughly just so, a bit more than half a kilogram, maybe around a kilogram, perhaps. Um, you have the two foot switches on it, one for the overdrive section which is here, the scrambler, and one just for the EQ and preamp section of the pedal. On the rear of the panel you have the power input. It takes a 100MA power in. You have on the right of the unit the input, the through, so that's uh, an input that you can just go straight into the pedal and back out again. So say you were recording and you wanted to send the signal into this unit but then maybe wanted to clean the eye straight out as well you can do that straight from the through um, it has an auxiliary in and it has a three and a half mil jack so the little headphone style jack and then a quarter inch one as well so i think that's quite a useful little feature so you've got a wide range of things you could say put a drum machine in this aux in or maybe your mp3 player in the other one it's up to you on the left hand side of the unit you have your xlr out which is critical on a unit like this um, the ground lift button there if you've got any harm, uh, a line out so that's your straight back out to say an amplifier but you want the signal that has been modified by the pedal that will do that and then your headphones out which is a three and a half mil jack. When we talk about what's on the front of the unit here you've got the this side we'll start on this side you have the aux level so that's the level of the input that you're putting in here so your mp3 or your drum machine or whatever you want to put in it treble ba treble mid bass and then the overall volume level of the preamp section and then you have the two classic ampeg switches so that's the ultra high switch there just like you have an svt and an ultra low switch on this side of the pedal you have the scrambler overdrive section so this has a blend knob so the further right it is the more you have blended into the signal and then the amount of drive you want on that side too. One thing I will say about this pedal is it takes a 9 volt battery. There isn't a power supply with the pedal, it doesn't come with one in the box. The 9 volt battery section is just under this back plate, so you just take that off and put the 9 volt in. The other thing that this pedal has is a switch inside, so if you take that panel off you'll see a little switch, a jumper switch, which allows you to take the input level down. So if you have very high output active bases or like to use a lot of EQ on your active bass, and it's overloading the pedal, you have the option to open this up and switch that jumper to change the amount of gain that it has hitting that preamp stage. Now I will move on to the Downtown Express bass multi-effect pedal, as Fender call it. 
Um, to me, it's not really a multi-effect pedal, but it is everything you would need on a gig. So here we are, here's the box. This is brand new. Unboxing it, pull the two tabs out, lift it up. We're greeted with this little fender message and information here, which I quite like. Pull that back. And then you have the Downtown Express manual. Take this off the front of the pedal. And there it is, big old unit in the plastic bag. Sliding that off, and I think it's a really great looking unit. Really, really, I love this brushed aluminium. I think it looks great, or aluminum, if you're watching this in the States, which you probably are, because most of my viewers are in the States. So this is a little bit more heavily packed than the Ampeg being that it also has the compressor module inside of it too. So you have the compressor button here on the far right, the overdrive button here, the EQ button here, and then the mute button for silent tuning. This switch here is an overdrive compressor order switch, so it changes the order of the overdrive, so the overdrive runs into the compressor, or you compress the signal first with the switch down. On the overdrive section you have this level, tone, drive, on the compressor, you have a blend knob, a gain knob, and then the threshold. And um, this here is your master volume knob, so that's your overall level. Onto the back of the unit, you have your normal jack guitar input here. A tuner output, which is always active, and even if you put the mute switch on, the tuner output works, um, so you can silently tune. And then your standard output jack to go to your amp, whatever else you want to send it to. Here you have the XLR, and just like the Ampeg, you have the ground lift, a little black knob here. And then you have the power input. It's a 400MA input, so that's quite a lot of power. That's more than my Decibel 11 will put out on each of its isolated 9 volts. So with this, I'm going to use the uh, TC Electronic wall power adapter. So it might be, might be a little bit di more difficult to power, but it shouldn't be too much. Most wall adapters will happily deliver that much power. And then you have the DI signal path, so you can change that from um, having the effects only, the effects and the EQ, or having it pre-effects, so pretty much the guitar signal goes straight in and then straight back out of the DI, so it runs as a clean DI. And then the last feature is the LED on and off switch. I think the LEDs on this look really cool. And unlike the dark glass stuff, they're not so blinding that you would would want them off. This unit is kind of a similar weight to the Ampeg, I'd say. The Ampeg's actually a little bit heavier. Picking them, picking them both up, the Ampeg is a little bit of a heavier pedal. But really both solid units, you could throw them at someone and they would both really hurt. So that's going to be stand them in good stead for stamping on them and all the stuff you're gonna do on a gig. If I were to pick one on looks alone, I think I would be choosing the Fender because it feels like a really classy piece. And I love the two-tone effect of the, the bottom being black and the gold plating across the top with the brushed aluminium. I really like that, that's really cool. But it's not really about how they look. They're both gonna do a really great job on your pedal board. So let's go and hear what they sound like. So now we're into the tone demo section of the video. I'm going to run you through the EQ controls and the drive controls and the controls on each of these pedals just in isolation. If this video has been helpful to you so far, smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. I'm interested to know in the comments right now what you guys are thinking of these pedals. Based on the unboxing section and running through the features, which pedal would you choose at this stage before you've heard them? I want to know that. Put that in the comments now. Let's take a look at this. We'll start off with the Fender. I'm just going to engage the EQ so you can hear the sounds of both of them with the EQs engaged because I think they have a slight character that they both impart straight away. So let's just do that. So here's the clean sound, just the amp. And then we'll add in the Fender EQ. Then we'll go to the Ampeg EQ. You can hear there the Ampeg imparts its own classic Ampeg low mid type sound. So turning that back off, we'll go back to the Fender EQ and I'll just run you through the bass EQ on its own.
and the same again on the Ampegs EQ. So I think there you can hear the, um, the Fender just has a, a much wider band and a really, really fat low end that actually, once you get to the very top, starts to distort. Whereas the Ampeg has a little bit more of a, much like the SVT cab, it doesn't go right quite so down in the deep lows, it sits a little bit more in the, the low mid range. Then we'll have a look at the mid range. That has a really pokey, kind of high mid rangey sound. Let's have a look at the amp. So to me the difference there is that the Ampeg seems to sit a little bit lower in the mids, maybe around the kind of 500-800 hertz range, whereas I feel like the Fender sits a little bit higher. So let's then take a look at the treble control. So I like the treble control on that, it really seems to just bring out a little bit of shine rather than anything, it doesn't sort of, when it cuts it kind of rolls off a bit more like a tone control actually, and then as you brighten it up it just adds a little bit of crispness but nothing too gritty. I think the thing I'm noticing with the Fender is when you get to the limits of the controls they add a real extra helping of whatever that is in the EQ that you're doing. So they're quite gentle sweeping through. But as you get to the very extremes, they add a real lot of it. So there's a similar story there with the Ampeg. I feel like with the Ampeg, the the hiss comes in a little bit earlier, so it's a more gentle and even progression around the whole of the, the spectrum, whereas the Fender's got those really extra bit of that EQ right at the very end if you want even more than it has. I think both of them with the treble controls kind of make it sound more like deader strings, so maybe more like a flat wound style sound really rather than takes off tons of the high end, I think it just mutes it, which I think is very nice, it's more like a tone control. And then on the Ampeg there's a couple of extra buttons that we just need to press in, so I'll just press in the ultra low and the ultra high buttons to give you an idea of what they do. So there that ultra low button is just taking the low EQ point and sucking it down a little bit. when you play with a pick and something like that the Ampeg Ultra High always gives you an extra bit of clank which can be really desirable in a rock mix. So those were the two EQ sections I want you to let me know in the comments now what you think the most versatile of those two EQ sections would be for you. I'm going to move on to the drive section uh, these two are different in character I feel very different and um, they have their own tone going on for both so we'll start with the fender this is the drive off and the character with the drive on and now we'll just run through the drive section
tạm là ông put both them halfway and roll the tone off to see if I can get more of a scrambler type sound from the fender Between those two, I would say that the Fender has a more scooped sound in its drive, whereas the Ampeg Strambler tries to push through the mid-range a little bit more. Let me know in the comments which one of those you prefer. So let's give the compressor a run through. With the blend all the way to the left, counterclockwise, you're getting your clean signal just straight through. And then as you wind it up to the right, that signal becomes more and more integrated with the compressor. So it's a form of parallel compression. Your clean signal runs alongside it and is blended in until you get all the way to the right where the whole signal is run through the compressor and compressed. So you would have been able to hear there where the compressor was releasing the signal. The amount of hiss just rises. Hopefully that's given you an idea of how the two EQ sections sound and the drive sections as well as the compressor on the Fender. Let me know in the comments now below whether your opinion has changed and which of those two pedals you would go for at this point. At this point I want to say both of these pedals are available from Langley Guitar Centre here in the UK and I have a very special offer on the Downtown Express. The very first person that watches this video subscribes to my channel and gets in contact with them either by phoning them or sending them an email will be able to purchase the Downtown Express for a 10% discount. So that's probably the best deal you're going to find online for a new Downtown Express and that's being offered to the very first person that gets in contact with them, mentions the channel, has subscribed to the channel and lets them know that you saw this offer in this video, you will be able to purchase the Downtown Express for 10% off. The Ampeg is currently a second-hand product in at the store and that is available for £135, so it's a really nice discount from new price um, and this Ampeg is in brand new condition. So either of these pedals is gonna be a great deal and a great steal. I'm gonna put links to those in the bar above me and I'll also put links in the description. Thank you so much for watching the All You Need To Know About The Bass Show. If you like this format and think it's good, please leave that in the comments. If you think I could do something better, leave that in the comments too. Um, and I will see you all around soon.
So that's the end of the video. I want you to let me know in the comments below which was your favorite pedal overall and which pedal would you be buying? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you around soon.